it is time for the February reading wrap up of 2024. Welcome or welcome back to a fictional escapist. My name is Chris and today's video is the February reading wrap up and I'd just like to point out I'm in a different black shirt. I bought this one new so prepare to see this one as much as you see the other black shirt that I always wear because apparently it's the only shirt I wear in videos. In the month of February I read a total of eight books. Six were actually published and ready to read and two were beta reads and I had a relatively decent month even though Malazan basically stole my life essence for a good two to three weeks of the month. Before we jump into the reads today, make sure you're checking the description box down below for links to my social media and Discord should you want to come along for the ride. Uh, now, like I said, had a fairly decent month. Um, there were a few things in here which I... they were okay, and a few things in here which were really good. So overall, it averaged out to be pretty Good. The first thing that I read or finished in the month of February, because I was pretty close to finishing it, was My Heart is a Chainsaw by Stephen Graham Jones. Now this is, I think it's a trilogy, I think it's the Indian Lake trilogy or something like that, and we're following a young protagonist who is obsessed with slasher films and knows everything there is to know about slasher films and wants to impart that knowledge onto anyone and everyone who will give her the time of day and even those that don't. This was a really interesting read. Um, Stephen Graham Jones has quite a unique voice when it comes to writing horror. Uh, this was definitely a love letter to slasher flicks of the, the 80s and the early 90s. Um, it, the character goes into a lot of detail about the slasher flicks that she has uh, watched and knows all the ins and outs. And like I, someone like me who goes way too deep into uh, film and cinematography and like just knows who was acting where why they were acting there directors uh, why they did certain cuts things like that so that was quite interesting the she's also it, it's a really good depiction of mental health so this uh, young person is very uh, depressed and i would say check your trigger warnings going into this um, if you're someone who does get triggered by depression and suicidal ideation, there are some very uncomfortable scenes in this book. I know that I, as someone who has previously suffered uh, those things and occasionally does have flare-ups, um, there was a scene in this book where an attempt was made on this young person's life. So I don't want to give spoilers away, but just go in knowing that there is an, an attempt in here. And if that's something that you're not ready to read, then maybe give it a miss for now. Um, I, I did get affected by that scene, but overall I enjoyed the book for what it was. And I will be continuing on now that I sort of have a flair for the, the book. I don't know if trigger warnings exist for the book. I didn't go and look for them, which is on me, not on the book itself. But I had a really good time, super easy to read with it once you got used to the, the style of writing. Um, but yeah, had a good time. The next one I picked up was on audio, and that was Wistful Ascending by JCM Byrne. And I was really reluctant to read this book, to be totally honest with you. Superheroes are not my jam. I've never really enjoyed them. But after picking up, I think it was Initialize uh, a little while back, I had a wonderful time with it. I said, you know what, it's time. I really liked Partial Function, so I gave Wistful Ascending a go. And I'm really glad that I did because this book was so fun. Rohan is such a cool like sarcastic underdog of a hero and we're following him as he's basically given up his cape he wants to retire live a fairly peaceful life he's second class tow chief rohan now he has a just a day job he gets paid well for it and he enjoys what he is doing but there is a tear opened in i think it's a wormhole or a black hole or something a tear has opened in Wistful where he is currently residing and ships are coming through and they need to be sort of discovered. So we discover the Ursons, which are big space bears, which were really fun. Um, and there's a lot of sort of political goings on behind the scenes when the scientists come in and they start to try and figure out what's going on and they want to study the wormhole and it can cause more bad than good. So Rohan basically has to take on his uh, superhero persona again as the griffin so this was a really really fun book i would recommend audio if you are someone who enjoys audio books because it was fantastic and i'll be looking forward to continuing on with the series now that i've gotten a bit of a taste of it 
The next one I picked up was Khan Empire of Silver. This is the fourth book in the Conqueror series by Con Eagledon. This, um, I mean, if you know the history, but I don't want to go into sports, people are going to read this book. This one essentially follows the lives of um, brothers and sons of Genghis Khan in the aftermath of what happens at the end of book three. So this was more, a lot of more conversations, a lot more dialogue, a lot more uh, interconnected relationships which were explored, uh, consequences of actions which were explored. I found this one to be personally slower. So my enjoyment of the series has been book one was really good. I really enjoyed it. Book two was very slow as we were going through um, the early years of conquering nations and trying to pull everyone under one nation. Book three, again, was quite fast. And then this one, again, it went on the slower scale. So I'm not sure where the series is going to sit for me overall. I do plan on reading the fifth one at some point, but I am going to take a break um, for the month of March and maybe the month of April while I've got some other stuff going on. The next one that I picked up was The Bone Hunters by Stephen Erickson. And to say the next one is probably a lie. This one took me about four weeks and I started in the last week of January and I kept going all the way through February. This is a book that I definitely read slower. Um, and I find with Erickson, I tend to read it slower because there's just a lot. There's a lot in there. I'm not saying that it's overly, you know, a lot of people say this series is very complicated and it is. And it is because there's, 400 names for the same character um we're chopping back and forth with different characters and different people that we're following um i will say that with the bone hunters in particular so the bone hunters is the sixth entry into the original well into the the 10 book stint that makes up malazan book of the fallen i will say this is the fastest that i felt grounded in a malazan book that i've read what erickson has done quite well in my opinion is that the puzzle pieces from gardens of the moon every subsequent book they'll start coming together and you'll start making little um, connections in your head you'll start sort of really putting together where people are going to fall in this epic fantasy in the bone hunters it becomes a lot clearer what sides people are starting to take in this war of the gods that is happening here we have a lot more of the gods in this book we have a lot more of people interacting with the gods in this book so and sort of picking their sides and gods picking their teams essentially so because we are dealing with characters that we have dealt with over the last five books it did feel i i felt more connected to this particular book and i've enjoyed my time with Malazan so far but within, you know, 100 pages of this book, I was like, okay, cool. I know where, we at, where we're at. Whereas with the other ones, it's taken a lot longer or I'm just there for the ride and putting puzzle pieces together as we go along. But it did take me a long time. There was a, book, there was a chapter in here. I think it was chapter six, which is the Siege of Wagatan. I, I probably pronounced that wrong. And I read this book. It's a 200-page chapter. And I was doing a beta read, which I'll talk about at the end of the, the books that are currently out. Um, at the time, and so this chapter took me a full week. This 200-page chapter took me a full week. And I was like, why is this taking so long? It is a 200-page battle, and I was really bored through it. Now, had I read that 200-page chapter in a day or two, my experience would have been completely different. So I put up on Twitter like an idiot, why does everyone love this book? This chapter is very boring. And they're like, it's the best chapter in all of Malazan. What are you talking about, you absolute idiot? Because Malazan fans are very passionate about <laughs> about Malazan. Um, I was like, you know what? I did read it over five days in like little 20 to 30 page snippets. So maybe my enjoyment would have been completely different if I'd read this as, you know, a one shot or over a day or two. Anyway, that was my experience with it. Um, I have I have plans to go on to Reaper's Gale in the month of April, but I'm also starting Dante's uh, the, the Divine Comedy. So we'll see. We'll see what happens there. The next one I picked up I didn't love, and that was Dragon Quest by Anne McCaffrey. Now, I read Dragon Flight with Luke and Taylor in January, and we were all sort of on the fence about reading the second book. And I was like, I'll take one for the team. I'll read the second book, and I'll let you know if all the stuff gets better. And to give you context of my enjoyment level of this book, I've forgotten nearly everything that's happened in it to the where I'm now doing the wrap-up. I've very 
little recollection of what happened in that book. Um, I know that we were following uh, Lessa and Fala and the characters in the first book a few years after this, in the second book, a few years after the first book had occurred. And they're now trying to get to the point where they can destroy Thread before it becomes a threat. And they're sort of investigating some other avenues of getting rid of Thread, which is the big bad. It comes from the Red Star. It can destroy everything. The only thing that could previously destroy this was the dragons. Uh, And now they're sort of having a look at other things. And again, I remember the scientific elements blending in with the fantasy elements were really cool. And that was something I did like from the first book. But yeah, the, the, the prose, again, lovely, very magical, beautiful to follow. Just some of the themes in the book are not for me. So I think that's where I'm going to cut it for the Dragonflight series of, or sorry, the the Riders of Pern, I think it is, series. That's where I'm probably going to bow out um, of that one. And the last thing I picked up was a cute little novella called Magic and Need, and this is by Rachel Parisi. And this was about a... Um, a lass who has given up her job as a lawyer to open up a games shop because she loves Dungeons and Dragons and she was very passionate about gaming. Um, she goes to her game shop one day and realizes there's a portal open and she goes, well, I'm a gamer, so I'm going to step through that. And then she ends up in another world and in the middle of a murder mystery. It's a sort of semi-spicy, sapphic, uh, cozy mystery fantasy. There's a whole lot of words in there. Normally cozy is not my thing. I don't pick up a lot of cozy stuff, but this was what I needed after some heavier reads in uh, The Bone Hunters and a frustrating read that was Dragon Quest. This was a lot of fun and like go into it knowing it is not the best written thing in the world, but it's unapologetically a palate cleanser that just is cozy and cute and you just read it and you enjoy it for what it is. Now let's jump across to the two beta reads that I read in the month of February. Now I can't say too much about these because they're still being advertised they're still being talked about one of them hasn't had a cover reveal yet but the first one i read was thorns of war by joao of silva this is the second book in the smoke smiths series this one team if you liked seeds of war this one really does step it up a notch we see a lot more smoke magic inside of it we see what smoke magic can really do what the evolution of it is there are some things that were alluded to in seeds of war that we do get to see come to fruition in this book um i had a couple of issues with it which i've told the author about but also i've not sat and read 100 to 150 pages in one stint in a long time and the last 100 to 150 pages of uh this book were incredible they were so high staked they were so fast paced and I was utterly addicted to it at the end of the book. And that is at beta stages. We still need to go through edits. We still need to go through proofers and, you know, getting it out to arc readers and at all those stages, potential changes can be made, which is really fun. It's why I like beta reading because you get to see, you know, uh, beta is not really a rough draft. That'd be more of an alpha read, but a beta is not the finished product. So you get a good difference between, you know, something that's not finished to an actual art copy and it can be super fun. So for me, that doesn't really count as rereading. I guess in some ways it is because you're familiar with, I mean, concepts of the story, but I I had a pretty good time with it. Um, Very impressed with those last 100 and 150 pages. So can't wait till that's out in the world. Kickstarter is going on now if you want to go on back Joao's Kickstarter. And the last one that I'll talk about is another beta reading that is Soul Cage by Luke Schultz. I've seen the cover and the cover is phenomenal. I can't show you the cover because it's not out yet. But just know that when you see it, you'll be like, that's a cool cover. As we are, as we do uh, in the fantasy community. So this book is very different to the, um, the King's Radiance and the Sun Prince or whatever the second book was called. This is experimental, very dark fantasy with a magic system based around the consumption of souls it was dark and it was good this is definitely the strongest entry of luke's work that i have read personally at beta stages like i said still has to go through and edit and i'm really excited to see what people's uh, reception is of this book because it's dark so if you're a grimdark fan you're going to enjoy it 
Um, we deal with some representation on the spectrum. We have uh, representation of addiction and, you know, check your trigger warnings when you're going into this one once it gets released. But I think it was all done very respectfully, in my opinion, and it was well done. And I'm excited to see people read it. Those were the things I read in the month of February. What was your favorite book of the month? Let me know in the comments down below. If you like the content, give one of those. And if you want to see more of it, click subscribe at your will. And I, I'll catch you next video. Ciao.